I know you were married to George Dwinnell for 40 wonderful years. Would you please tell us a little bit about that part of your life? Well, that's probably one of the better. It, it is probably the best part of my life. Well, no, kids are too. But, but anyhow, uh, I met George long before we got married. Uh, he was one of my better customers when I was working at a bar at the R.A.'s bar. And he'd come in almost every night. And, and, and once in a while I'd bring his wife in. And they, I knew they were married. I had no intentions of ever messing around with George. But after a couple of years I got to watch and his wife was messing around a lot more than he was. But I still did not. I was not interested in George. But one night his wife asked me, she said, she knows that I love to play poker, which I do. And she, she said, I want to go out of town with this boyfriend of hers. She said, would you play poker with George? Just keep him busy. And there is a big poker game. And I said, sure. And that's what started our relationship. But it didn't take very long and he moved into my trailer, <laughs> gave up a beautiful home. And he had six vehicles then, and Thunderbirds and old cars and Broncos and he didn't care. He gave them all to her. He gave her everything and came and lived in a trailer with me. Oh, I don't know what he saw, but, <laughs> yeah. but anyhow, we had 40 wonderful years together. And um, he mended, when I got that, um, that ranch, the 300 acres, he, he never had a thing to do with the cattle. He never, that wasn't him. And I didn't want him to, but he mended a lot of fences for me in more ways than one. Uh, he was a wonder, wonderful, wonderful man. And I just lost a couple of years ago with Alzheimer's. It was horrible to watch a smart, smart man go down to nothing. Yeah, he didn't know who he was. And then, yeah. And he took care of him for six years. And, but then one night he almost burned our house down. And thank God our neighbors came over early in the morning and our house was full of gas. And he loved to hear that clicking on the stove, electric stove, and the, or a gas stove it was. And that's what he, he kept going back and doing it. So I finally had to put him in a home, yeah. Yep, sure miss that boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you traveled a lot. I know you traveled a lot on business, but you also yeah. got a few fun trips in there. Yeah. He was a uh, he, insurance man at first. No, he didn't sell insurance. He settled claims. And after we were first married a little while, I was had uh, the ranch and everything, and but he wasn't getting along good at his job. They weren't busy. They, so he was getting, we knew he was getting laid off. And he had an opportunity to go to Arizona and work at Scottsdale Insurance. And so I thought, well, that sounds fun. I can do that too. And, but it meant giving up all my cattle, selling my trailer, my, my, pins, to get my portable pins, everything I owned I had to sell. And, uh, but anyhow, I sold everything and I thought I had the house sold. And in the meantime, George ended up in the hospital. He had, they thought he'd had a stroke, but he didn't, thank God. But I came home from the hospital and I got a phone call from the guy who bought my house. He said, I'm sorry, but I can't buy your house. He said, you think, he said, I've got problems. I said, you don't know what problems are. But so anyhow, George got out of the hospital. He had to go on and go to Arizona for that job. And so then I went down and looked and we couldn't afford to live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, way, way out of our league. We didn't have any money anyhow. And where was I going? 
So anyhow, we found this house that was a repo, and a government repo, and it was big. I mean, it was like, well, I don't know exactly, a half an acre, I guess, or more, in town. And it had a beautiful swimming pool. Oh, it was huge, like a motel pool. And a tennis court, and land, and you look over the McDowell Mountains, but the inside of the house had been totally trashed. And George and I got a realtor, went and looked at it, and you walk in the house, and there was a bar. You walk right to a bar. This will work. <laughs> <laughs> and he went one way, and I went the other, and we met in the kitchen and said, we can fix it. It was so bad. I don't know what we were thinking. The kitchen was so, the kids, they let their kids just run wild, evidently. And they pulled the doors off of the cupboards and to get, and oh, they'd stand in the dishwasher. They'd knock the door off and they had finally pulled. It was horrible what they did to a house. Oh. I think a lot of it was deliberate. And anyhow, but we thought, oh yeah, we can fix this one. And only it was me that ended up doing most of the fixing because he went to work every day. And Honest to God, I put 153 gallons of paint on that house because in most, a lot of it was a wall around it, a cinder block wall. But it wore out these uh, wood sprayers. Yeah, sure it was, it was those, anyhow, the paint sprayers. Yeah, I wore out two of them on that wall. But and then we sold it and I made good money. But we weren't planning to sell it. Uh, but one day we were going down to Home Depot buying some more parts for it. And on the way down there, there's a for sale, uh, a state sale like thing. Uh, the whole house, everything was for sale. And we went in there and people were dressed to the hilt and I was dressed in a sweatshirt and I looked like a rag queen. <laughs> and, you know, and for some reason, the owner there picked on us. All these people all fancy wanting this house. It was beautiful, another beautiful. I mean, it was a, really a gorgeous house. Two stories so. though. And so the guy, the realtor, picked us, I don't know, that whole crowd, why he would decide that maybe he thought we just were that dumb that we'd go along with it. And but what most people didn't realize and that's, I shouldn't even say this, but you can sell five houses and not pay income tax if you live in them yourself for two years each. Yeah, and most people don't know that. Mm -hmm. So like if you're making whatever you're making, I mean, just think how much more. Like something you made 50 and you actually made 70. Yeah. And then you get to where you paid one off, so you, then you go buy another one. Yeah, but you're not giving it all away on interest. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And income tax. And income tax, yeah. 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 Okay. So you'd sold the first house in the meantime? Uh-huh, yeah, we okay. did. Legitimately, yeah. you yeah. no longer needed Juan. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay. Then from that house, where did you go after you sold that house? We sold it and then went out in the country and bought one that, uh, that's the one that I designed the backyard and put in a pool. It didn't have any of that. It had the Kiva and that was all. That, that thing, oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. And what kind of money did you make on that? 200. In, in two years? And, yeah, and it would have made more, but the times got tough in between. Right. Yeah, at one time that house brought a million dollars. Yeah. We sold it for five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. From that house, then you bought one similar. Exactly, yeah. the same house, so it was flipped. And I had broke my arm looking at it at the, the last house there. I broke my arm looking at it, and here I've got my arm in a cast. 
and moved into this house that was flipped. And I, I mean, I've been on so many pain pills and stuff. They had to have three surgeries on my arm. It was that broken. And wore a big old brace on the outside instead of pin and inside. The With all the medication I was on, I'd get up in the night to go to the bathroom and I couldn't find the bathroom. I'd head for a closet. It was horrible. You don't, you don't think about that when you buy a house that's flipped up, right? Everything is exactly opposite of where you think it was. But anyhow, made it through that one too and we sold it. But, well, the reason that we sold so many partly is because I did not like Arizona. I got so, I mean, you had to uh, ration your, your air. Air conditioning was your biggest thing down there. And you couldn't afford it. You could have a $400 leg bill really quick. And you couldn't, like, uh, you couldn't bake on, like, Thanksgiving because that was a Thursday. The only time you could overuse stuff was on the weekend because they kept all their air or their cooling time for businesses. Yeah. But George worked in a business all day long in a suit and tie and, and you know, air conditioning and everything. And he didn't really know how bad it was. But every, every other August, he'd come with me to put up a for sale sign out in the yard because I'm going back to Colorado <laughs> but we sold four of them and then oh heck we gotta move on on the last house you made money on that one again yeah big numbers not, yeah. As, not as much not as much yeah yeah we got there right is that recession that you if, you can, if you had enough money to buy something you better buy it All right but yeah, like I said, that one then, it went down so bad that, yeah, it could have been a million dollar house. But we, we still did good on it. Yeah. yeah, you weren't real happy there. No. It wasn't for me. Well, I thought you could raise cattle in Arizona. I Nobody told me, you know, you don't do that in Arizona. In Scottsdale. Yeah, or, yeah, or even Arizona. So the cattle couldn't no. take the heat. Right. Oh. Yeah, because first thing I got there is like, well, where's the cell barn? Oh, uh, so. But I got so busy fixing up houses then, and that became my, my, oh, I, well, I tried working that one job that you worked too, Susie. Yeah, taking pictures of school kids. Oh, yeah. Right. I'd have to get up at four in the morning and drive to some place I'd never been. And then they sent me out there alone with a 70 pound camera. And I went to get it out of my truck and dropped it out of my leg. Oh, geez. Oh, man, what a mess. I had to have surgery. I had to have the joint replaced in my thumb over that. I had to have my leg worked on. Yeah, but this ain't working. When did the, didn't you have rotator cuff at one time? Yeah. When was yes. that? Was, yeah, yeah. Yep. in that was, Arizona, yeah. you had to have a rotator cuff surgery. And the guy that did it, well, he was he's supposed to be a little, uh, what do you call that, where they barely go in. Microscopic. Oh. Yeah, yeah, microscopic. I woke up in so much pain, and I got a scar like that. And he had cut it open when it was messed up. And it hurt so bad for so long, and George said, we're going to get you an MRI. And he said it was broke. He had broke a bone in my arm, and but he can't, there's nothing they can do now to fix it, except a shoulder, complete shoulder, a reverse shoulder is what they want to do now. Replacement. But I went to a doctor here in town, and he sent me to another one. There was three doctors, one thing. Two of them looked at it. One of two of them wanted to do a surgery, a reverse uh, replacement, and the third one says you won't make it off the table. So that's why I don't do it. Yeah, yeah. And what really was the rotator cuff uh, original uh, problem? I, I mean, how you, what you drop in that camera? Drop in the camera. Just want to make sure on that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what, what did you make an hour at that job? No, it was just, oh god, right. it was terrible. But when we left here, like I guess I told you about 
uh, the guy backing out that he'd sold it. And so George had to go ahead and go on down to Arizona. And a guy came along and was interested in buying it, but he didn't have enough money down payment. And I said, well, what could you do? And he told me he could give me 400 a month for a down payment. And I, he would take it right away. And we went, and he said, I'll meet you at the Dairy Queen in Parker. And we sat and wrote our contract on a little piece of paper that he would pay me $400 a month as his down payment. And he'd give me some money, I forget what it was, but every month for, until he paid it off, he sent me $400. Every, and then I put that 400 into any house that I was fixing on. Yeah. And well, so you really had to trust money. him. I did. I but you really felt that obviously, huh? But it worked. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you got to think outside the box. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How many years altogether were you in Arizona? Uh, let me think. That's a good question. I'm thinking about 10 is what, but I don't know. You know, I don't know. It seemed like forever. Right. But it was probably only about 10. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 9. Okay, 90 is when we went there. Maybe when did we come back? I well, hope no. It was 2006 that we bought that house. 2005. Maybe 15 years. Oh. Yeah. 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 Most people being tickled to death live in Scottsdale. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm built wrong. You really missed Colorado, huh? I did. Well, stay tuned for what happens next in Colorado. Okay.